Hello and welcome to Awake Ones. I'm Alexandra Winman. And I'm Lorraine Flaherty. And today we're going to be talking to you a little bit about channeling. Because Lorraine and myself, on our recent retreat that we led in Egypt, had quite a few experiences of channeling coming through for the group and for ourselves. And we've had a bit of guidance to share these publicly through our YouTube channel. So instead of just sharing the messages straight out on video, because those of you who may not have experienced channeling might find it a little bit odd or might not understand what's quite going on, we thought we would explain a little bit about channeling, what it is, how it's done, uh, and what you might expect to experience when you listen or watch back the messages that came through. So I'm going to start with Lorraine because she doesn't often channel publicly. And um, it was kind of one of your first times, I think, channeling to a group yeah. on this trip, wasn't it? So yeah. what was your experience of it, Laurie? Well, if I can backtrack a little bit. So I've been around people that have channeled for a long time. And as people will probably know, I'm a very healthy uh, skeptic about lots of things. And I find that in some situations, channeling can almost be a convenient way of people saying oh I'm being told and then they can say whatever they want and they can say it's coming from somewhere else so a, a bit like any of these things I always have to experience it myself first it's a big lesson in discernment isn't in it discernment. Yeah. but to know if something is real and to know if something is possible I have to do it so I have done various different forms of, of channeling and I've gone and listened to particularly I think it was uh, Jerry and Esther Hicks because I, I loved what they were talking about in um, the, the Abraham messages pretty sure that all of that is genuine there was wasn't anything there that made me skeptical my own experiences and I think I may have talked about this one before was when I went to Holland and opened myself up and allowed a, a being to come in and channel through me which was very odd very weird took me about three days to actually allow it to happen because the first day as I allowed the energy to come in it kind of got stuck at my throat because I think I panicked and <laughs> clenched my energy field and this being got stuck and was <laughs> garbled communication then the second day I was able to allow this being to come in chat through me but still felt quite squashed and, and a bit claustrophobic and wasn't was that, really was that trance mediumship? I think though? that was more trance mediumship. Yeah, I went into it. Yeah, yeah, so again, that's where there's all these different versions of it. Yeah, and then the third day, I expanded my energy field, allowed the being to come in, and then he could chat away. And it was completely separate to me. I was it was like I was sat somewhere else. Him and my uh, you know my, my colleague Kim were having this conversation that I was not party to. So that's one way of channeling, but my other than the Egypt trip, my other experiences usually happen when I'm in high energy places mm. or I'm on the road and I will end up having conversations in my head. Now I'm really conscious that that makes me sound <laughs> She's not like nuts. a complete <laughs> lunatic. And even when it happened the first time in California, when I was driving through the desert and suddenly I uh, was having this conversation heard a voice in my head I was convinced it was just me it was just my imagination but as the voices went on it was very clear from what they were saying and how they were speaking that this was definitely someone other than me and so for hours I was having these conversations which were amazing and really insightful and extraordinary and it was company on the road and it was amazing so that's been my comfort zone with channeling is that I will quite often have a voice in my head and we have this telepathic communication and I'm quite happy with that and I hadn't ever shared it in any way so I roped her into it <laughs> and I well I think the first out loud channeling was actually on our road trip in California yeah so yeah. Uh, with the with the group on the road trip some messages came through and I'm and I as you know I am a slightly reluctant channeler because you don't know what's going to come through. I don't know if it's genuine. So I am, I am quite resistant. But this time in Egypt, because the energy is so high there anyway, you're almost walking through that space in another dimension most mm. of the time. And the experiences that you have in your visions and in your feelings, so definitely these conversations that are happening, it's 
a completely different level anyway. So when you were channeling, <laughs> which Al channels regularly now and <laughs> brings in these amazing, amazing energies and then left the space open with a, if anybody else would like to bring a message through, <laughs> I, could, I could just... Just an invitation. Yeah, just an invitation, <laughs> not. <laughs> and I could just feel that there was somebody there that wanted to speak. And so it is just a case of getting out of my own way and, and just allowing it to come through briefly. So I did share, and it's the first time really, certainly in a formal group setting that I've let stuff come through. And I think the microphone was quite far away, so it's quite, <laughs> we're gonna share, the, the, particularly the first one, it's, it's very quiet. But it, in a way, got easier the second time. I think when we were in Abydos, that one was definitely easier but I still have a slight reticence, just because it just, it, I'm not sure it doesn't, I, it's not that I like to be in control of things, but I never know, I don't know what's going to come out. You have no control over what's going to be yeah. said. So it requires a huge amount of trust between you and whoever it is that's communicating. Yeah. So yeah, making sure that things are set up. And we had set yeah. things up very, very safely before we worked with an intention that only anybody that was for the highest benefit was going to come through and the wording was was beautiful, beautiful. I i've only sort of briefly listened to it it's, be it's beautiful you need to listen back <laughs> yeah so that, that's that's part of my journey and i think that is what we wanted to share that there are lots of different ways of channeling coming through and for me the the true essence of it is when the message is not dictatorial it's not saying anything negative it's not saying anything but they're usually very loving compassionate messages mm. and i think anytime messages come through where someone's being told what to do or there's anything that's not if the vibration it feels dominate right, there should be no yeah, yeah then then i would question the source and where the information is coming through but so because it's again it's a fairly recent thing for you isn't it so Talk to the viewers about your experience and, and how the channeling started. It's a, sharing it publicly is a, a recent thing yeah. for me. Yeah. Channeling for me and channeling out loud uh, has been happening for years and years and during my workshops especially. Yeah. Um, I often do channel to my, to my groups. I bring it through in my, my workshops. Um, it used to come through when I was teaching Angelic Reiki, if I'd be opening the space, there'd always be a, a, a message that would come through. And they were always my favorite beings. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I didn't really know that what I was doing was necessarily called channeling or anything like that. But I remember I was on a, an angel workshop many years ago and the, the teacher teaching the angel workshop, there were about 15 people in the group. Um, she got guidance and she said, oh, well, my guides have told me, the angels have told me we're going to do some channeling. And then she pointed the finger at me and went, Alexandra, will you please come and sit in this chair? You're going to channel a message. And I was like, am I? <laughs> and I sat there and I knew, I just knew exactly what to do. And I'd never yeah. been taught how to do it. I just opened my mouth and my normal fast talking Australian, like, g'day guides, you know, um, voice didn't come through. It was... The message was much more beautiful and I and my voice slowed right down and was much more considered but it will always start with something like hello beautiful ones or hello dear ones or sweet ones or little ones and the little ones isn't about our, our um, us as being lesser mm. than or you know less than the beings coming through it's just about our stature because we're smaller compared to the vast beings that are coming through um, my experience of channeling is that it's something completely different to trance mediumship. Trance mediumship is where you're dealing with uh, beings from the spirit realm or the fourth dimension, and they still have a, a more dense kind of astral body than beings of light that come in from, I'm talking about like fifth dimension or above, and I point up, but it's not above, it's just a faster, higher rate of vibration. They're light beings. And the beings that I channel... They come from a realm beyond duality. So there's no, yeah. it's a realm where there's no light or dark. It's the transcendence. It is a space of pure and total unconditional love vibration. And they're very light beings. So you won't necessarily, you'll feel a difference when they step in, but it's not this, that they're stepping in and taking over your body. There's a beautiful uh, merging of the light field, of the, the light bodies 
uh, when these beings come in. So it's almost like an infusion. It's like if you were to get a, a vessel of water and put a drop of dye in it, it's like an infusion of your, your mm. energy, your light body, your light frequency. So they're not dominating you. They're not taking over you. They're not uh, taking over your vessel. They are just merging with you. Yeah. And then the message that comes through, you're always completely present. You can always hear exactly what is being said. And in many ways, you are in partnership with the being. So yeah. they're not necessarily uh, telling you what to say. I always think it's a two-way conversation. And in many ways, you're an interpreter. So it's very multidimensional, though. It's not like you're hearing the words and then relaying them, though that is one way of channeling. Mm. Uh, with me, it's more like, the words flow through me. I just open and the words are flowing through. But sometimes it will use the vocabulary that I would use because they're coming through my brain and yeah. my, what, my, my yeah. database, my memory banks, my, my, the, my, the access of what I have access to. So sometimes it doesn't use the wording either. Sometimes words come through and I'm like, where did that <laughs> come from? What's a light quotient? What's that mean? Um, but it will always be really loving, really beautiful, yeah. really um, ethereal. Um, there are there's two main ways that that I sort of channel, and one is that it is a relaying of information. So that's when the voice won't change; it will sound like me. Although my I will I usually do slow down because the information's coming through, and it's a bit like you're just kind of saying, "So hello, dear ones, we are here among you." And now they're going to get me to start. <laughs> so I'm not going to go into it. it. And it is, you do have full control. Like I'm just saying, I'm not going to start channeling now. Thank you. Step back. Um, but they can also come in and there's something that, that uh, I only learned how to do recently. And I was skeptical of this. And Laurie was like, mm -hmm, you're doing it now, are you? I used to be quite skeptical of what we call direct voice channels where people would do the, the direct voice. And it was the being does kind of come in and they do speak through your voice. So they do kind of access your vocal cords, your vocal range, and then they will control the voice as in how they want it to come through. Yeah. So in yeah, that, and I think that's what happened to me that time. Yeah. Because it wasn't, it wasn't a um, spirit. It was actually an ET that had come through. Oh, I did so the there, direct yeah. voice channeling. So it's direct voice yeah, channeling. It wasn't, it wasn't trans yeah. mediumship. Yeah. And then it does feel you yeah. do go into a deeper trance in that state. You're still very aware, but you do feel like the conversation is much more kind of yeah. coming through you rather than you being kind of interacting with it, but you're more of the observer. Yeah, that's, what I, yeah. that's exactly what I yeah, yeah. experienced. It's interesting because I got basically told off by the guides, you know, and have been told off by the guides because I was a bit skeptical recently of somebody who is a direct voice channel. And then basically immediately after that, pretty much started having experience of direct voice channeling. So it was like, ha ha, you want to be a skeptic? Well, here's how it works. And it's interesting because I teach channeling and it's wonderful because now I can build in that aspect to my courses and teach people the difference between direct voice channeling yeah. and just kind of relaying the message. So there's many different ways. Another thing that's coming through is light language and sound. The sound activations on this planet are incredible. They're not meant to have a specific meaning. So light language, it's not about, oh, what are they saying? Can we interpret it? Light language is meant to get you out of your logical brain, out of your comfort zone. You're not meant to have any reference points to it. It's an, it's an awakener. It's meant to make you question. It's meant to make you ask why, which stretches your consciousness and sound as well. So the sound vibrations that come through are very healing. So when you hear a channeled message, it's not just about the words. Mm. It's not just about the message that's being relayed to you. You will feel energy. So I see myself as a conductor of energy and you know, you're open to channel. I think a conduit. You're a conduit. For whatever yeah. is coming through. And the words are like sound activation. So some of the words will be given in English as a guide. Uh, so it will have meaning to you. But then also the energy, the light coming through is a huge part, probably the main component of any channeled message because it's about feeling mm. what is a truth to you and taking from it what you need. So I usually say to people when I'm channeling, usually in a group, I'll get everyone to close their eyes and I'll say, feel the words, don't listen, don't try to make sense of them, feel them. You're being given things on a subconscious level that your consciousness could never really contain because you wouldn't have reference points for it. So it's more information coming through than you know. So we're gonna share uh, two major channelings that came through 
in Egypt, uh, both myself and Lorraine Channel intern for both these times. One of them was at Abu Ghraib, the Stargate, and one of them was uh, inside the temple complex of Abydos in a medita- beautiful meditation room sound chamber. And um, one of the one of the channelings that does come through is predominantly sound and chanting because we were channeling a group of beings called the Hathors or the Hathors. So the invitation is there to just bathe in the sound and see what what sensations it brings up for you, what emotions it brings up for you, and not to try to make too much sense of what's going on. You might want to laugh. You might actually be like, this is ridiculous, and want to burst out laughing, and that's fine too, you know, mm. because it will it does make you uncomfortable, some of it. Um, especially when it's considered weird or out there or, you know, like I'm having, you know, both of us having to overcome the uh, uncomfortability of putting it ourselves out there yeah. and being woo-woo and doing this. But there's so many people on the planet now with these abilities. It's it's a bit like we're going back to the age of the prophets where there were loads of prophets. Yeah. This is happening again on our planet now. There are so many prophets um, and lots of people have this gift. It's not just for one or two uh, and it doesn't make anyone any more special than anybody yeah. else either. So it's just, it's part, I always see myself as a guinea pig. It's part of this byproduct of awakening consciousness that we're all going through. Yeah. Um, so you might find that you start channeling after you watch the video. <laughs> but I want to say as well is that the experience that we had, we are only showing us out of, you know, just uh, with respect to the, the rest of the group, but mm. there were there were a whole number of us that were actually chanting together and it, none of it's planned. It's it's very spontaneous. And the even though, again, it's not always it's not like harmonizing as you would with singing. But what's happening is that each person as they come in when you're there you feel it so intensely is that it's creating kind of waves of of sound of mm-hmm. frequency of energy that's that's lifting and it's elevating and it's it's kind of breaking through it literally is opening the space so that connection when you're there and the feeling that you have is is quite amazing so you don't worry about the sound or whether it works everyone is just mm. connecting it's not a it's, performance it's not a performance <laughs> everyone's just bringing their sound and there are moments where it sounds discordant and then there are other moments where it just seamlessly blends together and when that happens it is so exquisitely beautiful and you really do feel the the shift and, and essentially that's what chanting real chanting when you're just being fully present in that space is all about and it's it's very emotional and hugely clearing i mean we know that sound that color that these frequencies there is a vibration that there is um you know in, in each specific frequency for each person there is a note or a tone that is is yours and i think that's part of it that as as we move through it everyone will have a moment where it's their note that's being hit and that will clear and, and release energy that's stuck i, I think we are so as yet unaware of the power really of sound mm. of sound healing and and how important it is so yeah as well as the words the just allowing that and, and just allowing that to be a part of it because uh, i remember many years ago one of the first times i was in the king's chamber in egypt and we were meditating we'd done a shamanic drumming ceremony and at the end one of the guys actually climbed up onto the sarcophagus and suddenly his arms went up and he started chanting in this extraordinary sound. I had no idea what he was doing. And I remember listening to it thinking, my God, that doesn't even sound human because it was so high pitched and these notes that he was throwing around were extraordinary. And my human self was thinking, God, that's almost, it it, it is almost non-human and amazing. How is he doing that? (laughs) And then the next thing I know, my arms went up and it wasn't conscious. I wasn't mm. lifting them. They just suddenly raised up of their own accord. And then I started to harmonize with him. I started to, my voice started to, to, to go with him and weave in and around what he was saying. And I know it wasn't me mm. because I tried later to, to sustain notes for as long as I had been sustaining mm. them in that chanting experience and I couldn't do it. And then four or five of the other people in the group all joined in. And they all reported the same thing, that it was just this spontaneous. It felt like their arms were being pulled up. It felt like it was something that we'd done before. 
And we know that those chambers in there, they are not, it was not a tomb. They were definitely uh, energy, energy generators. Awakeners. Awakeners. <laughs> and, you know, we suspect and, and, you know, I'm pretty sure that it, it will come out that sound was quite... Uh, What's the word I'm Prevalent. looking for? Yeah, sound was something that would have been used in the building of the pyramids. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we, you yeah. know, there are there are snippets of, of bits, you know, mm. the, the, the walls of Jericho that came down because of trumpets that were blowing. And, you know, there are reports of, of things that have been built in, whether it was Tibet or in Egypt, where it was sound frequencies that was changing the vibration of the molecules of the stone. Mm and then allowing it to shift and move. So I think this is all, these are all little pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Yep. And so, yeah. yeah it was technology, it's wasn't technology. it? It's technology. High technology. It is technology. So mm. we are going to share and, uh, and, then and, and, also, and I'm going I'm to share. <laughs> while, you're, while you're watching as well, when we do the, the, the chanting and the toning, the invitation is there while you're watching to join, join in, in. The, to the toning, join yeah, in and indeed. have a chant because it, it's you know you can feel the vibration of your voice in your body and your voice yeah. will travel to wherever it's needed uh, if you need healing or anything like that it will also help you to have a, 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 a probably a, more, a faster shift in whatever it is you need to shift the sound is really extraordinary absolutely but we really hope that you enjoy, enjoy this it. one this episode <laughs> and uh, Lorraine and I would love to hear your feedback um, also, would you like more videos like this? You know, would you like more woo woo? <laughs> what, do you, what, what, what would you like on Awake Ones? We'd love to hear from you. And we'd, we'd love to hear about your experiences in channeling yes, as well. We would love to hear your experiences about channeling. Um, we also have a Awake Ones community on Facebook. So if you'd like to join that and start gaining some support for yourself, because as all of us are going through this awakening, it's, it's kind of our plan to, to kind of make conversations about this stuff normal we need to start talking about this stuff and knowing that we're not alone we're not weird we're not wacky we're not out there i mean we are but that it's okay to be that yeah. so your vibe attracts your tribe so on that note thank you so much for watching thanks for watching we are here crystalline ones and you have now entered a chamber of light. This is a kind of a spaceship you are sitting within if you wish to be aware of the high point at the center and imagine it is as a crystalline structure with the high point far above you and the crystal vessel of light coming down around you and anchoring into this platform of crystal that you find yourselves atop at this time. What you sit in is technology, dear ones. This is ancient technology and it is technology that was gifted to the earth by the stellar nations and star tribes eons ago. You were here and you knew how to activate this technology and you are remembering your time in this place. For you were among the ones who walked this place and brought this technology with you from other realms. The Stargate in truth is not this physical structure. The Stargate is within your own hearts. This structure was built to raise the frequency of your own inner light quotient to activate your inner light, your love vibration, your infinite wisdom, your divine union and oneness with the cosmology of all. This structure 
was built primarily as an amplifier of peace. In this space, you may feel a certain serenity and tranquility come around you. For here, the pure ones meditate as you are and bring forth the wisdom of their hearts. But when you see the earth and all occurring around you through the eyes of peace, then that is the lens you create and amplify in this space to enhance the possibility of peace for all peoples and all nations both on world and beyond.
Thank you. 
come with much joy, with much celebration, with much love. We want you to be the best of each of you. There is much gratitude for the love that perhaps we know is the love of spirit. But we know that we are here in the future and we want you. We are a part of you. We have always been a part of you. As you have always been a part of us. As you have always been a part of us. Each thought we only go in peace and love. 